Friends, we thank God for his protection and love. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace upon our lives. We bless your mighty name. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Friends, today we are meditating on a very important theme, salvation through Jesus Christ. Salvation through Jesus Christ. This theme comprises the deep truth that Jesus Christ and through him we are offered redemption and eternal life. Salvation naturally refers to deliverance from sin and its outcomes brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. The Greek word for salvation is soteria, which signifies rescue, safety, and deliverance. It highlights not just a future promise, but a present reality of being set free from the power of sin. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith, the Son of God who took on human flesh, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose again to grant us eternal life. Every human being needs salvation. And so Romans chapter 3 verse 23 reminds us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, we remain in bondage to sin, but through him, we receive the gift of eternal life. And so it is important that we repose our trust in him, since he alone can offer it. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was a unique one-for-all act that achieved what no other sacrifice could. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 tells us, And by that will, we have been made holy, through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. His death and resurrection offer us a way to reconcile with God, something we could never achieve on our own. And so in John chapter 3, verse 16, we see the love of God. And I read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only and one Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. This verse reveals the death of God's love for humanity. He gave his only son, Jesus, as a sacrifice for our sins. The promise is clear. Belief in Jesus Christ grants us eternal life. This sacrificial love is the foundation of our salvation. To believe is more than an intellectual agreement that Jesus is God. It means to put our trust and confidence in him, that he alone can save us. It is to put Christ in charge of our present plans and eternal destiny. Believing is both trusting his words as reliable and relying on him for the power to change. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ, let this promise of everlasting life be yours and believe. John chapter 3 verse 36 gives us the choice of belief. And I read, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Amen. This verse emphasizes the importance of belief in Jesus. It presents a clear choice with eternal consequences. Belief leads to eternal life, and rejection leads to remaining under God's wrath. And John chapter 8 verse 24 gives us the consequence of unbelief. And I read, I told you that you will die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. Amen. Jesus stresses the gravity of unbelief. Without faith in him, we remain in our sins and face eternal separation from God. This underscores the agency of accepting Jesus as our savior. And so John chapter 10 verse 1 gives us Jesus as the true shepherd. And I read, Verily, truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climb in by some other way is a thief and a robber. Amen. Jesus warns against false paths to salvation. Only through him, the true shepherd, can we find a way to eternal life? Any other way is deceptive and leads to destruction. 
And so we need to be careful and see that we toe the line of Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 verse 9 gives us the gate. And I read, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Amen. Jesus describes himself as the gate, the only entry point to salvation. Through him, we find safety, sustenance, and true life. And so John chapter 14 verse 6 gives us the exclusive way. And I read, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This declaration by Jesus is unequivocal. He is the sole way to the Father. Salvation is exclusively through Jesus Christ, the embodiment of truth and life. And so in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, we are treated to the only name. And I read, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under the heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Amen. The apostles affirm that Jesus is the only source of salvation. His name alone has the power to save humanity. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 treats us to the sure foundation. And I read, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the foundation of our faith. Building our lives on any other foundation is futile and leads to spiritual collapse. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 gives us the mediator. And I read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, Jesus bridges the gap between God and humanity. And so as our mediator, he intercedes on our behalf, making our salvation possible. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12 gives us the assurance of life. And I read, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Amen. Possessing a relationship with Jesus is synonymous with possessing eternal life. Without him, true life is unattainable. Without faith in Jesus Christ, there can be no eternal life. Through faith, we have the Son, and together with Him, eternal life. Friends, as we reflect on these scriptures, it becomes evident that salvation is not something we can earn or achieve through our efforts. It is a gift of grace, available only through faith in Jesus Christ. Our journey to salvation starts with recognizing our need for a Savior and embracing Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives. Amen. God bless you for making time to listen to the word of God. Now, there's an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you have never done that before, then say this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in humility, acknowledging that I am a sinner in need of your grace. I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ, your son, died on the cross for my sins and rose again, conquering death and offering me the gift of eternal life. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life and heart. Be my savior and my Lord. Guide me and transform me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help me to live a life that honors you and reflects your love to others. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for welcoming me into your family. I trust in your promises and commit to following you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. You are now a member of God's family. Let us pray. Jesus, Father, thank you for your word that has come to us. Bless your word and let it be fruitful in the lives of all those listening to my voice. Thus, and many favors we ask through Christ, our Lord, with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, wonderful friends. Thank you, and God bless you.